was very good at attempting drop goals in these. Watery sun now after all four seasons earlier on. It's the perfect setting for what's always a tumultuous confrontation described for us this afternoon by Philip Matthews, Brian Moore and Eddie Butler. Craig Joubert of South Africa is today's referee. He's probably going to have a busy afternoon, although it's not going to be so heavy underfoot as it promised to be earlier this morning, it was chucking it down. All sorts of weather, snow, hail, and now there's sunshine. Young George Ford, his head-to-head -head with Jonathan Sexton, will be one of the highlights of this game. There are no prizes to be handed out in round three. But this is going to be very special at the halfway turn, Simon Zebo with the first catch. Dan Cole makes the first tackle. Connor Murray. George Ford covering back. It's there for Ireland. 
reward for the kicking game. Sean O'Brien. Long to Jared Payne. Zebo. Anthony Watson and Jonathan Joseph, the Bath pair, make the twin tackle. This is Jack McGrath, the prop. England offside. Happy St. David today, Brian. Yeah, and Ireland responding to that kickoff reception exactly the same way they have done the first two games of this championship. Zebo collecting, taking the ball up. Good Ruck, they're taking it on again. And then Conor Murray puts up that 50 50 Gary Owen. They win it back and they get the penalty. They're turning a kick reception into a set piece. The Sunday hush turns into a Sunday roar as Johnny Sexton puts Ireland ahead. Two early penalties conceded by England. Rory Best, his first throw. Safely down. From Geordie Murphy. Anthony Watson comes forward for it, but it's Devon Toner who stoops his long six foot ten frame and collects for Ireland and they're off again. Advantage over. Sexton, Sean O'Brien, who lasted beyond the hour mark on his comeback game. Paul O'Connell. Jack McGrath again. Sexton, one for Tommy Bow to chase against Jack Knoll. They both miss it. It's loose and it's good. Out of play. Real pressure and menace from Ireland. Well, I'd like to see that uh, kick again because whether or not either of them made it, well, <laughs> is that just an early jump? No, I think the doors went for that. But all that pressure is coming from Ireland's exit strategy from the kickoff and England loose discipline, giving them the, the, the advantage. Ireland turning kickoff reception into attack. That's what they're going to need to do if they're going to keep England pinned in their own half. It's going to be a crucial area here. Old club mates, and Marler against Mike Ross. England possibly have an advantage here. If the Irish can keep their set piece static and steady, that will be a significant plus for them. That is the five metre line under Conor Murray's feet. It's there safely. It comes to Robbie Henshaw. Murray looking for the middle gap which closed quickly. Lots of men out wide left, right. Rory Best takes it on. Held up over the line. They have numbers to the left. If Murray can get this back. The whistle comes first. Opportunity missed. I mean it is. Still a yeah. five-meter scrum, Ireland to feed. The side beyond the scrum from Conor Murray. Fine. There Wait, is no. space galore, Set. but only Tommy Bow in it at the moment. Jordy Murphy feeds Murray. It's the cutback. Ireland now one meter short. Sean O'Brien. Murray again, penalty. a penalty advantage, penalty awarded. There must have been a moment there with Sean O'Brien's eyes lit up. George Ford against O'Brien and Ford stood his ground. Scar tissue around that left eye from the clash of heads with Mathieu Bastaro. But the feet are in perfect working order. 6-0, Ireland lead. Conor Murray puts a boot trick this time. And we will have a change of pattern, a line-out. Win, win those aerial battles and regain possession. It's been so effective. Atwood and England's first possession. Luther Burrell. 
Ford, and it's good. No. Zebo across from the left, and England have made good tracks deep into the Irish 22 with a throw in to come. Well, that was a great example of where the kick to touch for Schwartz and Carl Murray's intention has just brought England onto them, and a good spell for England now. Hartley to Atwood again, second line out in succession. Different area of the field. They are within striking distance of the Irish line. James Haskell lets Ben Youngs take it away. Ford. The tackle by Robbie Henshaw. Youngs looks both ways. Goes on his own. Ireland trying to hold him up. Youngs gets to the ground. Didn't survive the clean-out, push back. Roxanne Green. Dan Cole. Doesn't get very far, but it's so slow, somebody has to take it on. Haskell. Atwood. Vuri Pola. Advantage. Penalty advantage to England. Ford to Joseph. No way through the centre yet. Ford. England are on the board. Six points to three. They had the penalty advantage. George Ford calmly dropped the ball. Five. Near the halfway line. Clean stroke by Rory Best. Jared Payne gets a few metres through George Ford's tackle. Tommy Bow comes in and doesn't make much ground at all. George Cruz with the tackle. Ooh, Jack McGrath goes backwards. Toner gets the pass away. And there's advantage to England, a chance for Alex Good to come away with it. Only to Rob Carney. Vuni Pola takes it well and passes well to Haskell, to Cruz. Ireland not nice. retreating 10 metres from the Carney kick. Within 10, much. George Ford not taking on the 50 metre kick. We'll have a 23 metre line out instead. Atwood, Ireland do not contest and then. Go in for what is simply a tackle situation. Dan Cole in possession. And that's Sean O'Brien not moving away. Ireland do it, take advantage of their time spent in the England half. Nine points to three they lead. Johnny Sexton, three out of three. Three out of four. Jack McGrath and Rory Best discuss the line-out call. O'Connell wins it, down to Toner, who gives it to Jordy Murphy. Found in the mall, fine, he's bound in the mall. Good work by George Cruz to stop Ireland making much ground, if any, best. Again, without his scrum cap. Robbie Henshaw in at scrum half, Dan Cole over the ball. It comes back on the Irish side. Sexton. 
A real tester. That might come off the crossbar, but it's too far in the end. And Alex Good makes a sound catch. Yeah. Thank you. Craig Zubair giving Ireland a hurry up. Two and a bit minutes left. Tone up. O'Donnell, and it works, Robbie Henshaw through. Good set-piece move by Ireland. Sexton again, inside, that one doesn't work, to Tommy Bow. And a chance for Jack Noel to break out. Forwards in front of him. Forwards trying to scamper back. Rob Carney watches the ball very carefully. Good thinking, though, by Jack Noel. Up against three forwards and outstripped a lot of them. We're into overtime at the end of the first half. Jared Payne out there in the centre. We will have time for the line out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Attention to Rory Best at the tail of the line out. Robshaw wins to Ben Youngs, forward to Burrell. Sexton slightly had to roll with the tackle. Ford to Joseph, good, no. Across comes Henshaw, good covering by the 12. And that is half-time. Frustration from Jack Noll, slight frustration from England after 40 minutes. Paul O'Connell's team with the advantage, Ireland lead. By nine points to three. No changes at half time. We have the one replacement on. Tommy O'Donnell for Sean O'Brien. Johnny Sexton prepares to start the second half. Tense, close. And there's no reason to suppose it's going to be any different in the second half. Tommy Bowe sets off in pursuit and wins it. Jack Riddle, green, play on. Dan Cole picked up the tap down by Bo. Rob Carney now in possession. Sexton. Well taken, Alex Good. Jack Noll <laughs> squirms under. Paul O'Connell. Yeah. Billy Vunipola, England haven't had their number eight on the charge much. And again, it's a lot of time for Tommy Bow to weigh up his options. Sexton through the hands to Rory Best. Sexton tried the spiral kick, didn't hit the sweet spot. Good says, I'm going high. Again, time for Carney to catch, have a look. Have a little run, which is quickly stopped. Mike Ross held up by Dave Atwood. Good. Watson against Zebo. Free kick to Ireland, Murray takes it quickly, Sexton, Jared Payne. Peter Omani, well done, well worked with Sexton. It's there for Conor Murray. Paul O'Connell. Penalty to Ireland. Sunlight on the pitch. And Ireland are nine points ahead. Rory Best. Paul O'Connell one-handed. Jack McGrath does well to uh, pick that up. Mike Ross 
the scrummager oh, okay. becomes the maker of the odd yard, Murray. There will be a challenge for this. Jack Noll knocks it on. Tommy Bow does pick up the scraps. Tona comes away with it. Sexton. Behind Watson. Good comes across. Watson held by Zebo, thrown down by the Irish left wing. Ireland have got this back their side. Jonathan Joseph off his feet. It's a scramble for this ball now. Back on the island side. Peter O'Mahony picks it up. Conor Murray waits. And then goes into the ruck. O'Mahony takes it on. Zebo goes in. There aren't many Irish backs. There aren't any Irish backs out on this near side. They have to come through the forwards. First through Rory Best. Murray. O'Mahony, who's been very involved in this passage. It's a free-for-all, no penalties. Chris Robshaw did well there to disrupt the Irish work. Rory Best drives on deep into the cluster of players. Sexton, Payne, Sexton back to Carney, crunching tackle on him by Jack Knoll, Henshaw, Robbie Henshaw! They'll have a look at it. Craig Zubair stops time. The Irish centre celebrates, but we'll have to check. Something, a kick to nothing, but it wasn't. No. That looks like a try. Well, it's certainly not, not on my hand, from behind. Yeah, it's certainly not in two, so if he's grounded it, it's try. What skills above yes, his head? Yeah. Right. Okay, those are all the angles. Okay, no to try. Yeah. Well, when there's been no space in the middle of the park, Ireland have used this aerial game. As Brian, as you were saying, in the first half, they struggled and they lost their accuracy, but they've, they've turned that up a notch in the second half. And it's led to the penalty, and it's led now to a try. How can England come back from this? Here's the accuracy of Johnny Sexton. The conversion so tight to the touchline, the kick was so precise to land so close to the out of bounds. Brilliant. Two kicks by Sexton, one for the try, one for the conversion, and Ireland lead by 19 points to three. We're still a few minutes away from the hour mark and the entry into the last quarter. Plenty of time for all sorts of things to happen. Marty Moore drops to one knee and Ireland just give a little bit there, enough for the penalty to go yep. against them. George Ford, successful. Well, it's relief for England. Ireland back in possession. Madigan to Henshaw. Good clear out work and O'Mahony involved again and overplayed perhaps. Rob Carney can't take the pass. Atwood to the new Vunipola. For Joseph can't take it. Went backwards. He can't dance his way out of that sort of pressure. Ireland have a player down. Well, Keen Healy. Not the culprit. No. Well, this is a Keen Healy tackle. It's Pye, yeah, but he's taken a knot. He's, he's back on his feet and walking back to take up his position. So, medical advice is, is he's okay. Healy. 
66 minutes gone, England trailing by 13 points. They want the points now. What a, what a difference this is from the England that kicked for the corner, Brian, in the first half. Yep. And whilst it would be improbable, 12 minutes left. Nineteen points to nine. Easter again, he's made an impact since he came on, the 36-year-old. Jack Noel. Luther Burrell all his own on the left going for the ball. Wigglesworth waits yet again, looks up. That close to the goal line. England, a resurgence. He's still on, he's still on his own. The referee whistle goes. Ireland have the put in. Cross. Connor Murray to feed. He'll be very conscious that the line to his right is the goal line. And England put the pressure on too early and concede the free kick. To the dismay of Tom Young's. Dan Cole to his Leicester teammate Tom Youngs. England with a solid stream of possession taken up by Mako Vunipola. Ford, 12 trees. Burrell came on the burst, but it's in the hands of Felix Jones. Connor Murray puts a boot to it, but it's hands back possession to England through Alex Good. Alex Good, big handoff. Ian Madigan taking a great deal of care, picking his spot and not being greedy. Doesn't need to be at this time, does he? Ireland will have the advantage of the throw. First time in a while they've been in England territory. I would expect them to take as much time as they needed to secure this throw. Take some time to drive the ball. Sean Cronin to throw. Ian Henderson with the catch. Cronin looks up. Is the driving ball on? Seems to be. It's not moving yet. In comes Jordy Murphy to lend his weight. Referee waves play on. It's become a fairly untidy ruck. Island reset. Come through Ian Henderson of Ulster. Cronin of Leinster. Madigan. Ducks under two tackles. And away comes Tommy O'Donnell. <coughs> Are Ireland going to see the game out safely? In possession, making ground. They've been under the cosh for quite a time in this second half. Having scored the points that seemed to put them in an unassailable position. Back came England. And Ireland have taken the initiative back. Is Ireland's number 12, Robbie Henshaw. Wigglesworth waits. Mako Vunipola. Cruz to four to twelve trees. Jack Noel is in at the corner. Forward but pass. it's a forward pass. Oh, look at that. Well, the, well, the touch is right in line. Billy Vunipola, Billy Twelve Trees, face says it all. The Irish fans' faces say it all. Exhaustion for Captain O'Connell, but Ireland have beaten England here, and they remain unbeaten in the Six Nations. Well, 
like we were saying before the game, that Ireland were going to have to do something different. They were going to have to show something they hadn't showed so far. What did they do? To be honest, they built on what they've done already in the championship, but did more of it. Their accuracy in their kicking in the second half was fantastic. They deserved it, but it was inches at the end. England, to their credit, can look at that scoreboard and say it should have been narrow, but on the whole, Ireland good for the win.